Indeed. Our next guest cuts a formidable figure in the world of British stage and screen. Richard Eyre has received just five Olivier Awards, four Evening Standard Awards, a BAFTA and a Knighthood. So, not much really. He recently directed Notes on a Scandal with Judy Dench and Kate Blanchett. Well, now Rich is transferring his production of The Last Cigarette to the West End stage. It's an adaptation of Simon Gray's memoirs in The Smoking Diaries. And uh, Richard joins us now. Lovely to see you. Uh, well, let's talk you. about The Smoking Diaries first of all. Um, the book, of course, that Simon Gray wrote about himself. He starts as in his mid-60s, looking back towards his, his childhood. Yes. Well, he, he was going through a... a a dry patch as a as a playwright so he turned his hand to prose as he did often through his life when he got stuck on a play and he actually wrote four volumes of memoirs the last one coda was published posthumously because he died last year and the books are the plot line is really rather thin it's all about a, a man who is trying to give up the loves of his life smoking and drinking uh, he managed to give up drinking, never managed to give up smoking. And uh, the play is, is an adaptation of the last two books. The play's called The Last Cigarette. And it's really a, a kind of audit of his life. It's a man who knows that he's going to die, as it were, before his time. And he's looking back on his life and looking on the, back on the loves of his life, the mistakes of his life. And and uh, by writing about his near death and his many illnesses he sometimes concentrates on what it is about life that makes it so well worth living yes mm. and makes people laugh in the process a lot of people just say how yeah, they it's laugh very, very funny, when they yeah. read yeah. he was he was he was he was a serious smoker i mean 60 a day for decades yes and the play takes this on uh, on the one hand it's <clears> a sort of you could say it's a celebration of smoking but at the same time it shows what a fatal celebration it is and it's it's really it, it touches everybody in the sense that everybody has something that they're uh, they're addicted to they're tied to and and can't give up Ab uh, above all it turns out that he's addicted to to life and he doesn't have ironically he doesn't have uh, a, a desire to die at all no mm. so tell us about the adaptation of course we've got three uh, cat three people playing him Yes, there are three Simon Greys. Um, you might accept one male, but two males and one very, very distinctive <laughs> female you probably wouldn't uh, uh, expect. <clears throat> but they're, they're, they're three parts of, this, uh, of the same personality. There's one rather serious and reflective one. There's one uh, comedic and, and facetious one. And there's the female one, which represents the, the feminine side of, of his character. And was that, the, 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 did the script pl call for a female actor? It, to play it that? did. Uh, oh. Simon, who died last year in, in August, adapted his books with the playwright Hugh Whitemore. And between the two of them, they dreamt up the idea, I think it may, might have been Hugh's idea, dreamt up the idea of the three Simons. And then they mutually decided that one of them had to be a woman, partly because in the play a lot of, uh, there are a lot of female characters who Felicity takes on, but also because it's, it's the feminine side. I mean, all of us have masculine and feminine sides, and she represents the, the feminine side. It's also because it's like a piece of music, and you've got a, a bass voice, you've got a tenor voice, and you've got a, a, a soprano voice. Mm. Yeah, and has it become a, a tribute, as you say, he died last year, um, because he, he was involved, obviously, in the play. Has it become a more or less a tribute to him primarily? Or? It, 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 it's partly a, a tribute. I mean, it's a tribute in the sense that it's about his life and it's about him. And throughout the play, you get to really admire and, and feel great affection for him. But mostly, it's, it's an entertainment. And the surprise, having said it's about death and, and, and uh, contemplation of, of death, it's surprisingly life-affirming, and it's very, very funny. I mean, he was a hugely distinguished playwright, of course. Uh, Butley, uh, Quartermain's Terms. Otherwise Engaged. Otherwise Engaged, yes. exactly. <coughs> I mean, so uh, in, in, does the play reflect that work of his at all? Or? It, it, it does. Uh, it does, and in, in some ways there are similar themes. I mean, it, the, the, a lot of the play is about... Am I loved? Who did I? Do I love? And who did I love? So, in that sense, it's very similar to his plays, which 
are about sort of raffish characters trying to account for their lives and sometimes make good the try and make good the the mistakes in their life mm. and in terms of the practicalities of the production you start in the chichester and now moving to the trafalgar trafalgar right? studios so how are you yes. going to accommodate actually it's a very similar space right. so it'll it'll translate very easily mercifully uh, and um i hope that uh, people will pour towards uh, Whitehall where the theatre well, we is. We all need a little bit of life affirming at the moment, don't we? Affirmation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, there's no shortage of that. Well, uh, sounds very interesting. Richard, thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. Nice it's to a meet pleasure. you. Thank you.